So what do I have for you this week? Brioche. This is a super versatile bread used in savory and sweet applications. It's very useful to know how to make it. And in this video, I'll just show you how to make a couple of these hot dog rolls and burger buns. But I will also publish two separate videos on how to use it in sweet applications. Now as always, you'll find full details in the video description down below. Well, let's see what equipment we'll use today. A tray, a bowl, you'll need scales as always, a scraper, temperature probe, and a rolling pin, and some parchment paper. And finally, for the first time, we're getting this beast out. You can't make brioche without it. That's just the way it is. Now for the ingredients. We use some strong white bread flour, water, salt, yeast, sugar, some eggs, and butter. Brioche takes ages to mix, so you must make sure that all your ingredients are stone cold. You need to refrigerate everything. I can't stress this enough. I even put my flour in the fridge. You could also freeze your mixing bowl and your dough hook. Now, for the butter, we need it to be cold, but we also need it to be pliable. So we need it to be soft. So just place it between some parchment paper and press it out. And as you can see, it's become nice and soft, but still cold. And now we can get on to mixing. I'll set up a timer just to show you how long this will take. So first in your mixing bowl, you wanna add your water, your salt, your yeast, and half of the sugar, all of the eggs, and all of the flour. Adding less sugar now will help with gluten development. So set your mixer to low speed. I'm using second speed on mine. And we'll slowly start bringing the dough together. So with my mixer, it'll take me around five to six minutes to get past the first stage. But basically what you wanna do is get some gluten going before you add the rest of the sugar. The dough should feel quite strong and resist pulling. Then you know it's ready. Now you can flatten it out, stretch it out a little bit to help incorporate the sugar. And now just add the rest of the sugar and we'll keep on mixing. Set it back up on the same speed as before and we'll leave it to mix for around five more minutes in my case. Now it's important to note that my mixer is quite large, the bowl is really big. And because the dough is quite small in relation to the bowl, the dough hook has a harder time picking it all up. So if your mixer is smaller, it may as well take you less time. But for me, around 11 minutes into the mixing process, I can feel the dough has become nice and stretchy, it's full of gluten. And now I can start adding the butter. Just break it off in chunks, add a few into the bowl, then switch your mixer back on. Now again, because my bowl is larger, I want to set it onto a higher speed, otherwise it will take forever to pick up all the butter. So on a medium speed, I'll keep mixing and adding the butter in chunks. You don't need to wait for the butter to be incorporated into the dough, you can just keep adding it. And as you notice now, the mixer is struggling to pick up all the dough and incorporate the butter, but that's totally fine. We'll keep on mixing for another 10 more minutes or even longer. This is why it's very important to refrigerate all your ingredients. The mixing time is so long that if you would just have everything at room temperature, your dough would warm up way too much by the time it's finished. And of course it would overproof and be no good. So I've added all my butter and I'll just leave it to mix on medium speed. You want to mix it until you don't see any more chunks of butter. And you want the dough to start coming off the sides of the bowl. So around 21 minutes into the process, I can see that the dough is coming together nicely. So I'll use my scraper just to scrape down the sides of the bowl. It would take the mixer longer to pick the dough up without me helping it basically. And we don't want to waste time here. Just scrape down the sides and we'll switch the mixer back on. But now we'll switch it back to low speed. So it's second speed for mine. The reason for that is that I don't want to over mix the dough. I only use the high speed to pick up all the butter and bring the dough together. But generally, it's advisable not to use a high speed when mixing your dough. So after around 27 minutes in total, the dough is ready. And that's about it, simple as that. Dust your work surface, tip the dough out, check for gluten. This is called the window pane test. So you pick up a piece of dough and gently stretch it. And you could basically stretch it until it's quite translucent. And as we can see, we have great gluten development. Now shape the dough into a ball by stretching the edge over the middle, going around in a circle 
until it reaches the point where you started basically. And then turn it smooth side up and just tighten it against the table. Now place your dough into a bowl and we'll leave it to proof for one hour. But before that, always take the temperature. 25.5 degrees C is just about perfect. Now cover it up and leave it to ferment for one hour. Now you will not see a massive rise during this time. That's totally fine, don't panic. And after the first hour proofing, we'll stick it in the fridge for one hour. After it's been refrigerated for one hour, we'll give the dough a fold. There's a couple of good reasons for folding the dough. One, it will degas the dough and it will help with an even fermentation. The second reason is that when we fold it, we create more layers in the gluten, which will make the dough stand up a little bit better. And we also want to equalize the temperature. It's been in the fridge for one hour, so the outside of it is cool, the inside is warm. So we want to equalize it all throughout the dough. That will give us a much more even fermentation. So to perform a fold, just stretch the dough out as before and fold the edge over the middle, going around the circle until it reaches the point where you started. Then flip it smooth side up, tighten it against the table, place it back into your bowl and in the fridge it goes for another hour. So you need to manage your time when making this dough because it took half an hour to mix and we proofed it for one hour on the table then we proofed it one hour in the fridge now we have proofed it another hour in the fridge and at this point if you were leaving this dough in one big piece and making let's say one large loaf then you would fold it again and place it in the fridge overnight now I've got a couple more videos to make after this one so I'm going to divide the dough into pieces that are appropriate for me and you can do this too, if you are making various things with your brioche, just divide them into appropriate sizes, wrap them in cling film and refrigerate them overnight. In this video, I'll use one of the dough pieces just to make some hot dog bun burger buns, but I'll use the other two pieces for some sweet recipes. Well, whatever you do, refrigerate your brioche overnight. And it's the next day, it's firmed up a little bit, but it's ready to be used. Cold proofing in the fridge will really develop the flavor in the brioche and it will also make it a lot easier to work with because it's cold and quite stiff. And now just make whatever you want to make. In this case I'm making some little buns so I divided it in four equal pieces. I will pre-shape them into rounds for now. Then I'll cover them up and I'll leave them to rest for half an hour. Now during this time the dough will warm up, it will make it a lot easier to shape and it should also rise a little bit. And after the half an hour resting, it's shaping time. Now dust your balls with a little bit of flour to prevent sticking, and then shape them in whatever shape you like. Shape around bun. We'll do the same as before with the folding. Flatten the dough out a little bit, fold the edges over the middle, going around in a circle until it reaches the point where it started. Then flip them back, smooth side up, and tighten them against the table. It's as easy as that. You could even leave the dough in one large piece and shape into a loaf. Brioche is so versatile you can make whatever you like with it. You could use this dough to make chocolate babka or something like that, that would be delicious. Or some cinnamon rolls. Or some super ugly hot dog rolls like I did here. Now once everything's shaped up, it's final proofing time. Now it took me two hours, it may take you less, it may take you more, depends on the temperature of your kitchen. But during the final hour of fermentation, preheat your oven. 190 degrees C, no fan. They should more or less double in size. You want them to be nice and light, really soft. Now handle them gently, you don't want to deflate the dough. There's one more step we need to take before baking. It's brushing them with egg. It'll give the buns a beautiful shiny golden brown crust. I brush them with a whole egg, but you could brush them with just egg yolk. That would give them an even more rich and darker crust. But that's up to you, just be gentle with the brush, you don't want to deflate the dough. And give him a nice even coating all around. I'm going to sprinkle the round buns with some sesame seed, classic. And a bit of sea salt for the hot dog rolls. And that's it, they're ready for the oven. We'll bake them for around 20 to 25 minutes. Just double check that the bottoms are baked properly. If not, just flip them upside down, continue baking for a couple more minutes. But that's your brioche bun, simple as that. Super soft, light, fluffy, sweet. What's not to love? If you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Loads more baking videos coming up. And check out my brioche playlist. 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.